Welcome stargazers. Get out your calendars, grab a pencil. I've got a very special date for you to circle. Today is March 11th, 2021. The dates I want you to circle are March 13th and 14th. Now, this is based on Eastern Standard Time in the U.S., so please adjust your calendar and timing to reflect that for where you are. So if you are ahead of us or behind us by X number of hours, adjust the calculation to reflect the true time for your location as opposed to here. Now, we have a new moon coming up uh, that is going to be a super duper new moon, not necessarily for the reasons you think it is. Um, these particular dates, these two dates, represents a period of time where there's a particular amount of instability. Uh, and we do have some storm front moving through. This, this is going to be not the happiest new moon we're, we're going to go through. There is the distinct possibility that we may lose somebody in a very dramatic way. Um, as these things go. So there's a lot of uh, tempestuous feelings and things of that nature happening, um, which is not typical for Pisces. Typically we think of Pisces as a very gentle, kind sign. But in this particular case with this new moon, there's a lot more going on. So there may be a lot more uh, sacrifices and scapegoating that's happening around this new moon, unfortunately. So, and victims, because Pisces does rule real victims, not made up pretend ones. All right. Now, on the 14th in particular, I also want you to, to write these times down. And remember, this is Eastern Standard Time, adjusted for your time zone, 7 a.m. until 1 p.m. That whole span of time is going to be very, very um, the, it, the testy. So be mindful of your personal safety and security wherever you're going at this during these times. So, and I don't mean carry a gun. Um, so be aware of your surroundings. Um, make sure you are taking safety precautions wherever you're going. Speak kindly and gently and keep your distance from people where you can and understand that there's a whole lot of people out here that are, um, that the, I, I hate to say the devil is at play because it sounds so like, ooh, um, but there's a whole lot of malefic forces that are operating around this time. So be mindful of that and be aware and be protective. Now, um, I'm going to finish this video with just a little just a little conversation about race and charts and character because uh, it needs to be said. So if you don't want to listen to this or have this conversation, you might want to tune out now. All right. So, and all this is springboarding off of this God awful interview with Meghan Markle and Oprah Winfrey. So I'm going to say it. And if you hate me for it and you unsubscribe or you dunk back, that's fine. But I'm, I'm going to stand by this. And also I want you guys to know before we get started, um, Piers Morgan is the most abrasive personality on the planet and Megyn Kelly has never been a huge thing for me, right? I'm not a huge fan of either of them. Um, they just, they just don't register. And I'm only vaguely aware of either of them, but in this particular case, I agree with them. I agree with them and I give them props for being, being, um, comfortable enough in their honesty and their positions in life to be able to speak up and see what is obviously the truth. And that is that Megan Mark was lying. Or, well, no, sorry. She wasn't lying. She was manipulating words. Now, um, so now oh, I'm sure everybody's feathers are all ruffled, right? So here's the thing with Meghan Markle. The things to understand. One, she's a first house son um, with a third house emphasis. But as a first house son, she thrives on attention. She needs attention like other people need air to breathe. All right. And when you have the sun in any of the angular houses, first, tenth, seventh, and fourth, you're going to get somebody who has a tremendous potential to be an out of control narcissist. It's just the nature of the thing. If you don't give them the correct platform and if they're not emotionally or psychologically healthy, uh, if this can lead to all sorts of toxic behaviors, which can, which also include out of control narcissism because the sun in those angular houses is where we connect or meet with, with the world around us. So the world and I become partners when I have an angular sun. This does not mean that people with sun in angular houses will automatically de facto become narcissists, but the potential for them to do it is greater, especially with first and 10th house sons, because that is all about the ego. There's tremendous ego involvement there. You know who else is an angular son? Trump. He is a 10th house son. And May Markle and Donald Trump both have this bizarre ability to get people to stand behind them so completely that they're willing to overlook everything else about their character. Uh, and character flaws uh, completely, 
right? And then yell at people if they're even the slightest bit critical of them. And that may be a timing thing like in the last couple of uh, decades or this may be specific to these personalities. I don't know what it is. I literally had a woman get on my channel and cuss at me and call me a Trump supporter because I wasn't 200% supportive of Meghan Markle in this interview before he kicked off. Me, a Trump supporter. If you've been on my channel more than two minutes, like, you know, I am the last thing close to being a Trump supporter. Oh my God. And, and if you've been around the channel any length of time, you also know that I'm a huge advocate for mental health. So th th I've got, I've got some real concerns about how this interview is delivered and the manipulation of words that occurred. So here's the first thing. If during this interview you heard Meghan Markle say, oh, well, I, I never Googled him. I never Googled the royal family ahead of time. And you believe that, you will believe anything. That is a bald-faced lie. Because if she, and it's a play on words. So here's the thing. If she didn't personally Google him, that does not mean that other people did not do it for her and give her the information, right? Um, there was another statement, oh, right, where um, Oprah Winfrey is asking her, like, so, you know, you're agreeing with me that you've never been asked these questions before. And, you know, she's like, oh, no, never. So, no, she hasn't been asked those specific questions before. But here's the thing. Don't forget, they also said that they are friends. They've known each other outside of this interview, which means that they've had these conversations before. So the questions might be brand new, but the topics, the materials, and the understanding of their positions on these things is not play on words. Um, and then this thing about mental health, right? And again, I'm a huge mental health advocate. So she specifically says, I asked them to go somewhere and they said no. So here's the thing. There's a difference between asking to go somewhere for mental health care, as opposed to asking for mental health care, however it needs to come. Now they have access to in-house therapists. They have access to the finest counselors on the planet. They got plenty of money for this and they've had therapists in the, the Royal family before. So I'm sure they were quite capable and willing to bring people in, but go back and listen to the interview. The key words here, I asked to go somewhere. Nobody in their right mind in that public, publicly visible family is going to let you go check yourself into a psych hospital. That looks bad. Even for people who are not part of royal families, that looks bad. We know that. Listen, if you've been around mental health and dealt with people who struggle with mental health issues, we all know how this goes down in the real world. Getting checked in to a public facility, typically, or an institution of some kind for mental health, typically indicates that you have reached such a level of disrepair that you need to be safeguarded 24 hours a day, right? And people who don't understand mental health issues, this they take a really negative view of this, even though we know it's necessary, it's still a negative view, right? So can you imagine somebody in the Royal family checking themselves into the psych hospital? Yeah. She specifically said, I asked to go somewhere. She didn't say I need help. She said, I asked to go somewhere. So through the whole interview, if you watch this, there are these little plays on words and the, in oh, and here's something that really pissed me off, right? And a whole lot of other people, but they can't say anything because the minute you say anything, like Pierce, Morgan and Megyn Kelly did, then suddenly everybody wants to set you on fire and call you a damn racist for bringing, for even pointing it out, right? The emperor has no clothes. She has insinuated that the royal family is, is full of racism and racists, okay? Because she didn't get what she wanted. They didn't protect me. Anyway, so here's the thing. We have a family that for generations, hundreds of years, thousands of years, right? In, in a culture, in a culture that both of them have been so insulated from everything else that of course, any introduction of a new complexion in the family is gonna raise some curiosity and questions, right? As somebody who is also biracial and knows many people who are in interracial relationships and don't kid yourself black folks, it's not like you don't have these conversations too. When you have two people from two different races coming together, at some point, somebody, mostly everybody, we're all wondering, hmm, I wonder what the kid's gonna look like. Because it's a point of curiosity, it's not a point of racism, right? So we don't actually know that this person specifically said, well, I wonder how dark Archie will be and all this sort of stuff. We don't know because she didn't hear it herself. And when Harry came on, like he wouldn't even get into it. You know, and there was just a whole lot of insinuation. This is all very whisper down the lane gossip stuff. And I'm very, very uh, upset about this because, because no matter how you feel about them, the royal family represents a diplomatic branch of the British government. They need to maintain positive 
and or neutral diplomatic relations with nations around the globe. All right. When you paint a family or a diplomatic branch like that as racists, um, it makes it very difficult for them to have diplomatic relations with other nations that don't look like them, obviously. And here's the thing. Here is the thing. All right. White culture. Oops, sorry. Thank you. White culture, not white people. White culture has been the dominant culture across the globe for a long time. This we call them colonizers for a reason. So the thing about it is as the majority and a very insular majority, right? Operating in their own little bubble of culture, right? Of course, there's a lot of racism invested in it because they don't know any better. They spent an entire lifetime or multiple lifetimes living in this fantasy bubble where they are the superior race because they've, you know, by force taken over other places. It's a culture thing, not a race thing. Just because someone is a particular race does not by default make them a racist or a criminal or a rapist or any other number of attributes we want to assign to people that are character issues. Okay. So of course, and in this family, they've only ever had three complexions in like how many hundreds of years they've had pale white, sheet white, and fish belly white. Those are the three complexions in the family for multiple generations. So now the first infusion of color in the family, of course, they're wondering what this kid is going to look like. We don't know. Like he's definitely not going to be pale white like the rest of us. But the way the information is presented and the insinuations and things left unsaid are specifically designed that way to let people speculate. And you know, just like gossip, when people speculate, it spins out of control, it gets very negative, and people will always go for the worst. This doesn't mean that there aren't races in the royal family. It doesn't mean that there are. And it doesn't mean that that particular comment is a reflection of any racist attitudes that were being held towards Archie. It was a simple, honest question out of curiosity that every interracial family has when they have kids. And just so we're clear about this, I knew a woman once who was married. She and her husband were, well, I was dating her, her son, but she and her husband were both very light skinned. They were like my complexion, right? They're black, but they're, they're bright skinned blacks. They had six kids. Three of those children were my complexion. They all looked like they were Hispanic. They were so bright, right? The other three of the children were deep brown. They were so dark compared to the other three that the father was convinced the mother was cheating on. She wasn't. But because of the way the, the genes spring up in these families, because of the forced interracial mixing, well, mostly forced through the generations, um, oftentimes recessive genes will pop up at the most odd times. And because of the extra melanin in the skin, when it shows up in these types of environments where we're dealing with mixed race black people, you know, you get this. You get two bright skinned parents who, who kick out six kids, three of them are their complexion, the other three are as dark as night. It happens. So, of course, anybody who's seen or, or has the least bit familiar with this type of phenomenon, it's the same question. Hmm, I wonder what the kid's going to look like. That's not a racist question. So, without context, and here's the thing about this interview and Ms. Markle with her first house son or third house emphasis. Uh, there's a lot of context that they deliberately left out and a whole lot of insinuation that they put in. It's extremely damaging to the royal family as a diplomatic branch of the British government. It was completely petty. Like, do we really care who made who cry over a bridesmaid's dress? Oh, my God. And remember, in case you forgot, they're not struggling like we're struggling. We are in the middle of a pandemic. We have just had the worst president in history finally leave office here in the United States. We have had his army of ignorant, armed, and angry minions try to literally physically and violently overthrow the government. <laughs> we have lost millions of people in this country through COVID because people don't want to believe in things like science. Um, we've got a mass catastrophe we're trying to dig ourselves out of right now as a result of four years of greed and self-absorbed priorities with an entire political party that's controlling the Senate. We got big issues here. So when Princess says, you know, oh, you know, blah, 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 blah. And this, like it's all these. Think about this for a second. Compared to what we're dealing with right now as this interview is kicking off, we're dealing with such big life and death stuff. And her big issues in life are that um, they weren't going to make her son a prince. 
uh, that, you know, it was, it was not true. You know, she didn't make the sister-in-law cry. The sister-in-law made me cry. You know, that they're struggling financially because Harry's gone through most of his inheritance. Um, you know, and no, I never Google them. And, they, you know, they ask about what color Archie might be when he's born. Like, nobody's ever going to ask that question, for God's sakes. So there's just a whole lot here. I, you know, I had really high hopes for her. I had really high hopes for her. I really wanted to like her. And she's just, I'm done with her now. I'm done. She has shown herself to be a narcissist, a complete malignant narcissist, um, which is unfortunate. Um, and maybe even a little bit sociopathic. And I'm going to finish this up with some thoughts about astrology and character. So here's the thing. <clears throat> if you look at a chart, the chart will not tell you about the character development of a person. Okay, it will show you the potentials and the strengths and where they work best at and how you can best align them to express the best parts of themselves. But it will not show you their level of integrity. It will not show you their character and it will not show you their will or their strength. Right. All of these things are personal development things that you have to develop in this lifetime. You can have a beautiful chart and still be a scummy human being. Right. Like the kid who's got the grand chart and fire and beautiful chart. He's a rapist and a liar. OK. Um, or Meghan Markle, who's got a first house fun and third house emphasis and she's got all the pretty girl privilege in the world presents as white and that this she's petty she's petty and she is self-absorbed enough that she's willing to smear an entire diplomatic branch of the united the united kingdom government for her personal game playing right her literally her personal petty revenge um and don't think she's not above it that is in her chart as well so when you look at charts be very very careful of assuming that there are character attributes that are there that are not because just like attractive people are often given uh, attributes uh, for qualities they don't actually have we just assume that they have them they're nicer they're smarter they're more trustworthy yada yada there's actual studies on this the about perception when it comes to attractive people and qualities that people assume they have um, check yourself check yourself and if you have time if you can stomach it go back and listen to the interview again and this time listen very carefully to what you're hearing and how words are couched or manipulated and put together i'm really um this is not a good interview this is not a good interview so speaking as somebody who is also biracial but does not present as white like ms markle does um and has family i have a sister who presents just as white as megan does we have very different experiences in the world very different experiences and my sister, who presents as white all her life and has enjoyed the benefits, pr privileges, and protections of looking like a white person, okay, is in no position to be a champion or speak for me or anybody else who looks like me that does not present as white, that is biracial. Meghan Markle and my sister are the same club. Meghan Markle is in no way, shape, or form in a position to champion anybody else. But she is more than happy to claim that heritage when it's convenient for her. All right, so mark your calendars, March 13th, 14th, stormy days ahead. Be careful and do take care of yourself. And also, if you need help, if you need help, ask for it. Find somebody to talk to um, or find some safe space to kind of chill and relax and understand that this, this is just a storm pattern. You're going to weather it and get through it. And it's not always easy and sometimes it's hard to see daybreak over the hill, but it's there. It's there. You got to hang in there.